Is it really flammable? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I've got several inquiries over the last few months about Mikey Pipes. What do you think about the EPA basically shutting down in 2025 new R410A equipment? I'm like, what are you talking about, right? In case you didn't know, on January 1st, 2025, the current regulations as they stand in the United States Manufacturers are no longer going to be able to sell R410A equipment like this Bosch IDS 2.0 connected air handler, ream with their R410A evaporator coils, their condensing units, Bosch's inverted ducted system premium condensing units. January 1st, we're not going to be able to buy that anymore. And According to the EPA, they're replacing it with this flammable refrigerant? Huh? 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 So stick around and I'll give you my take on, I guess, the power of lobbyists and industry and its effect on ordinary consumers and homeowners like you and me. So according to all the HVAC industry publications that I read, uh, the HVAC News, AHRI, plethora of organizations for HVAC uh, professionals, tradesmen, technicians, installers, all that good stuff. R410A is being phased out and it's being replaced by an A2L refrigerant that a lot of people are betting is gonna be R32. Now, according to research I've done and just what's available on online on the internet, this R32 is a blend of flammable refrigerant, just like R410A is. Did you know that R410A, that A, technically makes it a flammable refrigerant? So I'm gonna debunk that right now. I have a brand new container here of R32. See, brand new, still got the factory seal on it. Still got my purchase label from Johnstone on here. So I got a brand new R32 jug, 30 pounds, right? And I got a gas-fired furnace right here that melts copper. And in case you're wondering, Mikey Pies, what do you have a melting copper furnace? It's because we take our scrap copper and we make bars out of it. And that's solid, right? We make bars of copper, bars of brass. So I'm gonna take this R32 and we're gonna actually see if it's actually flammable. Are you ready? And I'm doing this because so many of you, even my existing clients, customers, business, business associates have been asking me, it's like, Mikey Pipes, why are we putting a flammable refrigerant in our home? I'm like, what are you talking about? R410 is a flammable refrigerant as well, right? No one's talking about that. Are you telling me that this R32 is gonna explode? It's flammable? Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, so there's the R32. This is for educational purposes. Let's crack it open a little bit. Open up our, our valve. We have ignition. Wow, it actually put the flame out. So you may be asking, Mikey Pipes, why is this happening? What is this A2L nonsense? Why do I have to get rid of my R410A equipment? Why do I have to have this quote, fake flammable refrigerant in my home? Well, that's not entirely correct. But let's so you may be asking, Mikey Pipes, what is this A2L nonsense all about? Well, first let's break down what A2L actually means. The A means it's non-toxic. The two means it's flammable. And the L means it has a low burning velocity. This is an A2L. This R32, right? Do you know what 
compounds, the two compounds that make up R410AR. Any idea? It's a blended refrigerant of two compounds. One being R125 and the other, you guessed it, R32. So why is the government making us get rid of our R410A equipment? Why can't we buy any more after January 1st, 2025? Well, the answer is pretty simple. A few years ago in 2020, the American government passed the AIM Act. It was in 2020. And some collateral damage of that AIM Act passed by the federal government in 2020 was getting rid of R410A in our equipment because it has these GWPs or global warming potential. So let's do, let's just think about this for a second. We have R410A, which is composed of R32 and R125, right? And we're replacing R410A with an A2L that's more than likely going to be R32. But R410A is a 50% blend of R32, right? Well, I don't want to get political here, but the lobbyists in government, our politicians, right? They're worried about the effects of these refrigerants that are being used in our refrigeration systems, our comfort cooling systems, commercially, residentially, that they have higher global warming potential than A2Ls, okay? They also claim it's going to save money, right? They're saying that by having an, an A2L refrigerant in your system, you're gonna save money. And in case you think I'm making this up, here's a little clip that I found. A2L refrigerants or A2Ls are used in refrigeration systems around the world. But did you know that using A2Ls can save you money and help protect our planet? Here's how. A2Ls with low global warming potential can increase system efficiency, lowering emissions through reduced energy consumption. They also have very low flammability, making them safer to use in a broad range of applications. And that's not all. Since A2Ls can make your system more efficient, your operating cost will be lower throughout the life cycle of your refrigeration equipment. How are we going to save money? You know, the operating pressures between an A2L refrigerant like R32 versus R410A is only 3%. If you factor in, you know, the operating pressures of R22 versus the operating pressures of R410A, yes, you had significant savings because the operating pressures of R410A were double that, almost, of R22. And that's where you get that 50% savings if you were to take out you know, a 13C or R22 system from the, from the 2000s or 1990s and put in a 410A system. If you put in like a 13C or R410A system, you have a 50% savings of energy usage to provide comfort cooling. Hmm. And then there's manufacturers of equipment that say, you know what? Oh, you know, you, the vacuum pump that you had that sucks out air, well, that's not approved for A2L usage. You're gonna to need to get a new vacuum pump. Um, really? You need a new vacuum pump that removes air from the refrigeration circuit. Hmm. I can understand, you know, needing a, a recovery machine to recover refrigerant, you know, on these new systems that aren't really installed yet. You know, I've only installed maybe like two R32 Daikin systems. Eventually, yes, we'll probably need recovery equipment for these A2L refrigerants, but are you telling me that an electrical spark is going to ignite the refrigerant when I just had open flame being extinguished by an A2L R32? Hmm. But let's be upfront, tell it like it is, right? We are going to have equipment like this Bosch <laughs> inverted ducted system, which is R410A, this train equipment over here that uses R410A, this air handler here that uses R410A. 
you're going to have this equipment that is no longer going to be available after January 1st, 2025. So the word of advice here is that if you have an older R410A system that you're thinking, oh, you know, I'll wait to replace maybe next year. Well, you're going to be in for a real surprise when next year there's a 20, if not more, 30% price increase on the cost of equipment than there is versus R4 today to the R32, the A2L refrigerant equipment. You're gonna be in for a surprise. So if lesson and the purpose of this video is that if you have 410A equipment, regardless of where you are in the United States, and it's older, it's acting up, you have a leak in the system, let's get it replaced this year because you'll still be able to get 410A. There's plenty of it available as you just saw. Don't make the mistake and wait and thinking, oh, I'll get the R32 equipment and uh, at least I'll have the newest and best technology. Food for thought. Thank you for watching. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe, and please make sure you smash that thumbs up button. And if you're in the New York, Long Island metropolitan area, I would love to help you. Give me a call at 516-295-2448. We're based in Woodmere, New York. If you're in Central Florida in Orlando, give me a call at 407-375-1100. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe.